today's Theater of the Mind is from the first-hand eyewitness account of Terry Barron. Strange Bedfellows. I've been working on cattle ranches for the better part of my life, going on 30-plus years at this point. My story takes place in the mid-90s, and I can honestly say, I ain't never seen anything like it before or since. The ranch I was helping work had some issues with a few of the cattle dying or just plain vanishing. I was asked to keep an eye on things at night, the best I could. It was an easy job and I liked being alone, so that was the perfect job for me. Peace, quiet, and the great outdoors. You just can't ask for more. After working the ranch for a few months without incident, my luck finally ran out. I'd been in the boardhouse working my way through a late dinner when I was alerted to the herd making some weird noises. Nervous sounds, like like maybe a coyote had found its way a bit too close to him. One of the cows started making some real weird noises, very distressing sound. So I grabbed my rifle off the mantle and slipped out into the dark to see what was going on. I made my way across the yard and through a small feed barn. I wanted a good vantage point to see what was causing all the commotion. I climbed to the top and looked out the open loft door. I could see quite a few of the cows had moved to one side of the small fenced-in portion of the field, milling about, mooing, and whatnot like they were real uncomfortable with something. That's when I saw something very strange. There was this tall fella standing there, cradling the head of one of the cows. He was in front and had her head lovingly between his big hands. Now, when I say this fellow was big, I mean B-I-G big. He looked like he was well over seven, maybe even eight feet tall, stooped a bit, and just a sweet talking that cow. I could hear these low sets of, I guess you'd describe them as grumbles and whatnot. And the cow he was holding just let out a few passive sounding moves. <laughs> That's when this big fella moves around the backside of the cow and, well, it starts having relations with one of my damn cows. He weren't wearing no clothes and was hairy as hairy as can be. I was realizing I was seeing one of them Bigfoot creatures and he was actually having relations with a cow in my field. I didn't know quite what to do, so I raised my rifle and fired off around before the big guy could. This startled the herd and the big guy, his head it whipped around looking for where that shot came from. The cows were mooing loudly now and moving around, even more nervously than they had been. My shot seemed to work as he stopped his courting with my cow and took off in a dead sprint. The poor fellow must have been hurting as he took off. I could hear some hooting and grumbling as he made his way across my field. And damned if that creature didn't just kind of effortlessly hurdle the fence and scramble away. <laughs> About a week or two passed without any weirdness. Then came the night of lights. It was overcast and the clouds were dark and threatening. I could see bright white and blue lights rolling through a patch of clouds like heat lightning or something. I'd seen that before, but this was different. This was centered over just a part of the pasture, and pulsed and flickered. Then a white-hot blinding flash of light struck the ground and a thunder crash in the air. And I yelled out, Well, hot damn! That was pretty extreme and intense to see. Then as quick as the flash of flight and flickering stopped, like it had all been used up in that one blast. I didn't think nothing of it and figured the storm must have just kind of blown itself out. A few days later, I went for a horseback ride out into the field where I saw the light, and there was that same cow that I'd seen with Bigfoot laid out on the ground and looking all messed up. It didn't look like it was hit with no lightning. It looked like it had been carved up like one of them cow mutilations. I shook my head and saw the scorch marks in the grass surrounding the cow where it had been laid out like something from a crime scene. I talked about it with the ranch owners when I brought them out to see. They just shook their heads in disgust and said they would handle it. That's when I told them about the seductive Sasquatch thing I'd seen just a few weeks ago. They looked at me like I had three heads. The owner looked at his brother and said, plain as day, Well, they're at it again. 
The two shared a knowing look, and that was that, I guess. Now, they never thought fit to explain a damn thing to me, and I wasn't about to ask, but I was told next time not to shoot to scare, but shoot to kill. But they never explained beyond that. And all the time I worked there, I never saw the hairy Casanova again, but I heard them cows getting worked up on a few occasions. I think he was around looking for love in all the wrong places, but knew we were waiting on him, so he never did strike again. At least ways, not close enough for me to see or know. Maybe he took his romance and out to the bigger field, far from prying eyes and earshot of his lovemaking. We did find two more cows all tore up and surrounded by burn marks, though. That's still the damnedest thing I've ever witnessed with these two old eyes. And I can tell you, I've seen some things in my life, so that says a lot. Thank you.